Erdington Hall School, Birmingham. Lions like sleeping. A school that's conducted a thorough review during the last 12 months, targeting teaching and learning within literacy for the foundation stage. Erdington. Ooh, ah, ooh. They've been asking themselves some pivotal questions. They believe the answers will have the greatest impact on their intake. Children from a culturally diverse but socially deprived area, where free school meals are taken by over 50%. So how do you best encourage the first steps in reading and writing? Open wide. How do you have the greatest impact on children's language for communication and thinking? And I can see his long face. His long face, he has got a long face. And what makes the most effective learning environment for literacy? Communication language in literacy is um, a complex and all, all pervasive area of learning really um, and that should be reflected within every aspect of your um, foundation stage classroom or your setting um, so that all of the opportunities and experiences that ch the children have within that classroom or setting are geared as well as the other five areas of learning to communication language and literacy. For the majority of children here their literacy learning journey starts in nursery. You need um, quality play-based opportunities for children to involve themselves in and to immerse themselves in. You also need um, an adult that actually has um, a clear idea about what learning uh, they intend to happen and to give children open-ended activities and opportunities that support that learning to take place. And you'd be looking for that dance to happen in your setting. And at Erdington Hall, that same dance continues in one of two reception classes. It should be noisy, it should be active, it should be chil have children questioning what they're doing, questioning the teacher, not just accepting everything, wondering why. I think the most magical part of being a foundation stage teacher is seeing the children develop as individuals and become more independent in their learning. Can you switch your brain some? I thought we'd look at this book. Because I like this book and I know. Kate and Angela's short-term planning is heavily influenced by the children. Medium term, they use themes. And in this, the final half term in reception, the children have been completely inspired by an animal character's theme, about to peak in a visit to the local zoo, now only a week away. There's a rumble in the jungle. There's a whisper in the trees. It's such an important part to be a role model to children with reading because the enthusiasm and excitement. The animals are waking up. Can you wake up for me? Oh! And rustling the leaves. <laughs> we certainly have a plan of where we're going with the text, but the children may often take it somewhere else. <laughs> but we develop vocabulary, teach them about writing, grammar, punctuation, uh, lots of things, so much you can get out of a book. Who can tell me a magic word that they think could be in the book? Mariam. Mariam. <gasps> a lion. Oh, I'm going to put that at the top of my list. A lion. A tiger. A tiger. A zebra. A zebra. A giraffe. A giraffe. Elephant. Well, they need to be a rich range of play opportunities um, that have been well thought through by the adults that are working with the children. Hello. Hello. Where are you now? And we're going to bring some more and, um, and we might see a lion. Oh, I think you might see a lion. Or a giraffe. Yeah, we've got giraffes. Yes, they're all over and the tigers and the lions might have some dinners. Oh, they do. They all get their food. You can come to the zoo at 10 o'clock. Yeah. OK, would you, like to write that? would you like to write that down so you yeah. don't forget? Yeah. 10 o'clock. And what's your name? Mrs Duckworth. You're Mrs Duckworth? Yeah, bye. OK, then, bye. 
Now, did you tell them the time that we were coming? Okay, you better ring them back up. All right. Um, what time 12 do you think we're o'clock. 12 o'clock, okay. Make sure you tell them it's 12 o'clock we're arriving. Right, I'm going to put this on top, Stacey, do you think? These children are developing a confidence with literacy and a willingness to write. Ooh. What we're going to do, we're going to try and make a map of that one, what Izzy is going to be like. There needs to be some focused opportunities where the adult is working with a group of children um, on some aspect of communication, language and literacy that they have planned for. Um, and there needs to be adults that are working with children that are ongoingly aware of um, how they can support those literacy opportunities and move them on. Put them all together. La, la, la. Who comes next? Polar bear, polar rex, polar bear. The adult supporting children at play is the difference when it's done well between it actually moving it on and really linking children with further learning or whether it actually stifles it and the play stops because of it. That's, that's the real challenge. We always find that we have much better standard of work when the children have initiated the activity or when it's something that children are very keen on. They wanted to talk about what they saw and the language flowed because they knew about it. The lion is in the water. None of the lions are going in the water. The speaking and listening we experienced on the zoo trip was really good to see where the children had progressed. Certainly at the beginning of the year a lot of children would have just given one word answers and used body gestures, pointing um, and noises to, to raise our attention. But certainly now we were looking for the sentences um, and also the reasons why behind those first initial statements. So really pulling the language out of them. I think as practitioners we're very switched on to the environmental print around us and so we don't miss the, a chance to teach. They were shouting, there's a sign. And they knew it was going to give them information. The maps they were very excited by. The red writing, the danger, you know, the animals bite. This is the foundation stage philosophy in practice. The children are having fun. Angela's addressing particular targets in linking sounds and letters. I can up with my young nose. Some of them were really reading the words and Jordan was very fluent with his reading um, because he was interested and they were actually going out finding the words and wanting to read them and using their letter sounds to read the map. They appeared much more competent with the maps than I thought they were. Um, we use a lot of maps in school but they wanted to see the penguins so they needed to find a for penguin. You're cute, I'm the map reader. Me, me there. The DigiBlues have been here today and also the speaking and listening cassette recorders and that will be taking the children's experiences back into the classroom and we can relive the moments that we've captured. And the dad, 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 the it's confidence and it, you know, it gives them a real perspective on the world that they live in. I, I like their yeah. You like their neck? Why do you like their neck? Because they always oh, nibbling on someone, don't they? I can see his body. You can see his body. How many legs has he got, Selena? Uh, one, two, three, four. Four legs. And he's got one very long nose, isn't he? Yeah, and I can see his long face. <laughs> <laughs> He's a baby one. Yeah. Could Green Class write an information book 
about their trip to the zoo. Do you think you will? Yeah! yeah. We thought I'd go in the bathroom and got my mum. I think the Rose Report is very clear that we need to be providing um, quality speaking and listening opportunities and I think it, it would be considered part of good early years practice that phonics is taught systematically. Lion likes sleeping. Wow, done. I didn't know that. I thought they ran around all day. So I think that's a really good sentence. The phonics teaching this year in reception has changed greatly. We've continued the style of teaching through from nursery to reception and certainly teaching it in a multi-sensory way through song, through actions, through story has certainly enhanced the learning. At the end, well done, Stacey. Yeah. To encourage the children to use letter sounds, we use the letters that they give us so their confidence is built that they are becoming writers. I think you can see their learning through the whole child, through their thinking, through their communication, through their body language. Lions like sleeping. But the greater balance of the sessions that follow up the zoo visit are play-based, indoors and outdoors, with a wide range of experiences that carefully target the literacy stepping stones. Using the ICT, taking the DigiBlues on the trip was a valuable experience as it brought the learning back into the classroom. So it's a way to start writing and to get the children back into that excitement and to remember actually what they saw on the day. I will say the monkeys were swinging. The, the monkeys were swinging? Well done. What do you think about at the beginning of your sentence? We need a, a capital letter. A capital letter. Go on, then you start. For capital, yeah. you can do that. Yeah, yeah. To remind you. And for a small letter, letter, you can do that. A small letter. Well done, Stacey. I think what's important uh, to remember is that you're seeing us in the third term and whilst it may look as if it all goes together effortlessly, there's a lot of work that's gone into that. When children come in in their first term, we sit at a table with an activity and we're excited by the activity and children come and join us and if they choose not to then that's entirely up to them and I think because they develop this trust they want to come and as the year progresses and they then see themselves as readers and writers they have a very I can do approach to life. <laughs> <laughs>